taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff for the second time in three seasons. With my partner, Greg Kelser, I am Eric Collins, getting ready to tip this one off. Before we do, how about we take a look at the Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineups. The visitors from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, out of the SWAC, they have one local kid, one Michigander, number 12, Jalon Floyd. He is from Detroit Southfield High School. He'll be a big part of the story this afternoon. For Michigan State, familiar names. Bryn Forbes, Denzel Valentine, both super local. Sexton High School just down the road with Trice, Dawson, and Schilling rounding out the five. There's Tom Izzo, now 20 seasons under his belt as the head man with the Spartans, bearing down on 500 career wins. With that, taking out of today's State Farm State of Success, the numbers just incredible. Six Final Four appearances, of course, the national championship in 2000. 17 consecutive NCAA tournaments. Tom Izzo has been there and won that. He'll be uh, matching wits with George Ivory. He's a swack guy through and through. Played his college basketball at Mississippi Valley State. And now in his seventh season as the head coach with the Golden Lions. Michigan State, they are now 5-3 and three on the year. All three losses, very respectable. Losing against Duke, Kansas, and Notre Dame. Well, the one thing that Tom Izzo consistently does is schedule heavy in the preseason. He understands that he's going to take some hits, but the idea is to make sure his team is improving, make sure they are building towards the ultimate goal of getting to the tournament, and then being as good and as strong and hopefully as healthy as they can be at that time. It's kind of a goofy tap. And they're going to give the ball to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Eric Curry, Courtney Green, Rob Riley working the whistles today. Here the Golden Lions. First shot of the day. Jovan Love misses everything. Saved nicely by Travis Trice. Here's Forbes alley oop, and that actually hit the rim, but it's picked up by Dawson, and a great start for the senior. Now that looked like the Dawson that played against Notre Dame. Very active, aggressive, and to start this game already with a rebound and a put-back basket, a three-point opportunity. You know, I think a lot of times when you experience success to the level that he did, getting 18 rebounds against a good quality opponent, you begin to see yourself differently, and I think now he expects to be able to come out and get double-digit rebounding on a nightly basis. With a monster game this afternoon, Brandon Dawson could get to 1,000 points, something to keep an eye on. It would take a monster game. He'd need 29 points to have an officially a grand career. Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions, 1-6 and six on the year. They're in the middle of a stretch of 13 of 14 games on the road yeah. to begin the year. You know, the entire conference plays that type of schedule, so you don't get a really good read on how good the SWAT can be because they're, they're not going to win a lot of these road games. They know that. Extra pass into the corner. Forbes, he is always in a position to shoot that basketball. This is thing. Very comfortable, and if you're Arkansas Pine Bluff, you, you've got to understand who the shooters are, where they are, and be able to get over there and get pressure on the basketball, not allow a wide open look like that. Here's Marcel Mobley, senior from Marion, Arkansas. A little teardrop. That's nice. Nice, nice. Mosley, their leading scorer, has to play well, has to play under control in this game. Michigan State's going to look to push the basketball in every opportunity, made or missed baskets. Arkansas Pine Bluff down four. Quick jumper in transition. Sails off the back of the iron by Love, rebounded by Schilling. Tom Izzo hoping that Schilling can stay on the floor for longer periods. Now making his third consecutive start, learning how to play without fouling. Valentine. That's now two three-pointers made by Michigan State and a quick timeout call by the Golden Lions. We'll take a timeout back to East Lansing in just a moment.
just a little bit over two minutes into this one. Michigan State, they've already made a couple of three-pointers. They're going to get the ball back. It's going to be an illegal screen set by Jalen Floyd. There's Floyd, local kid from Southfield High School in Detroit. Played at the high school level with Carlton Brundage, who is a big deal. Brundage originally started at Michigan and now is finishing up at Detroit. And oh, by the way, you see that Michigan they stubbed their toe this afternoon against NJIT. More on that in a moment. That is a huge loss for Michigan and a blow for the conference, but you know what? That New Jersey technology team may be a little bit better than anybody thought they would be. And they were has now made a pair of three points. This has been a trend all season long. Michigan State shoots in the three-pointer really well as a team. Mosley gets it right back. That was a high-arching rainbow. He's got all five points for the Golden Lions. He's fearless. I mean, he shot that thing, and he was heading back to the other end before it went through the hoop. Fearless and confident. He leads the team with 17 three-pointers made. Another clean catch and release. Valentine has it lip out. Kevin Hammond now with the ball. Senior from Little Rock, Arkansas, over to Love. Now a touch for Mosley. Last time out, Pine Bluff. They lost on the road against the Akron Zips. That was on Tuesday. Step back, Hammond. And it'll stay with the Golden Lions. Arkansas Pine Bluff has to use good shot selection. They've got to keep their turnovers low and really try to avoid forcing things. Uh, 35 seconds, use it all if you have to. Shorten the game if you have to. Those are the things that will give you a better chance of staying competitive when you're on the road against a much tougher opponent. Just saw the bio for Arkansas Pine Bluff. They come out of the swag. Southwest, Southwestern Athletic Conference. There's one of two historically black college and university conferences in Division I. You've got the SWAC, which is Grambling, and Southern, and you've got the MIAC, the Eastern Athletic Conference. That's Delaware State. Who's on that coast as well. Third turnover now for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and we do have subs to tell you about. Michigan State sending Lou Rawls Nair into the game for the first time. He's in the backcourt along with Marvin Clark Jr. Matt Costello has also checked in. The zone defense that you see right now, the 2-3 zone by the Golden Lions, that's something that they use almost exclusively. But as you see, a little vulnerable behind it as Michigan State able to throw over the top and get an easy basket. Give the assist to Nair. Costello in the scoring column. Nice shooting start for Michigan State. They've made five of seven, including the three three-pointers. Mosley, wild shot. He's knocked to the ground. He'll shoot a couple of free throws. Timeout on the floor. Michigan State, even when they bring in subs, they're ready to play. The freshman there finds the junior Costello. And the lead is nine for the locals. Our full slate of hoops continues later this afternoon. You've got Colgate, the Red Raiders, taking on the 14th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. And then we close it out with the Hoosiers and Savannah State. That game's at 7.30 Eastern time. Coverage starts after our game presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. And there's a whole bunch of youngsters who have gotten off to nice starts around the conference. You'll see Blackman and D'Angelo Russell in games later this afternoon right here on BTN. Some serious numbers and some nice shooting percentages as guys make the transition. Games that count now. With Greg Kelser, I'm Eric Collins. Marcel Mosley, he has all six points for Arkansas Pine Bluff. He's it's got a nice shooting stroke. He really spins it. Yeah. Ball's got a ton of rotation on it. Alvin Ellis into the game. Good to see him. He is just 
committed the turnover, threw it too high for Nair. But Michigan State's first turnover, and, you know, Tom Izzo told us before the game, one of the things that he'll be looking for is his team's concentration and how they approach a team. Even though this team is overmatched, can we play? Can we play hard? Can we be consistent? For 40 minutes, he's looking at his team's production and his team's mental attitude out there. Checking into the backcourt, DeAndre McIntyre. He's got the ball. This is McIntyre was pushed. And we'll have a foul on Travis Trice. The first personal foul on the senior from Dayton, Ohio. Hard to believe he's a senior. I know. It flies, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> I remember he's a fresh-faced freshman. Tom Izzo is always really like steady coach's son. And now the offense kicking it up a notch or two. Mosley. Saved nicely by Handley, but he stepped on the end line. Thaddeus Handley had it for a moment. That's now four turnovers for Pine Bluff. Alvin Ellis, number three in white, playing for just the third time this season, dealing with an ankle injury. Trice contested three. Offensive rebound. Marvin Clark will go to the free throw line. You know, I like the zone defense. Uh, I really don't have a problem with it, but, you know, it does have its challenges. First of all, you've got to be able to rotate. You've got to be able to recover. Most importantly, you have to be able to rebound out of it. And so far in this game, that seems to be a problem for the Golden Lions, rebounding those missed shots out at, of that zone. At one point, Greg, you were the all-time leading rebounder in the history of Michigan State basketball. Draymond Green took you down. Uh, what is the key for rebounding out of a zone? Well, I, I think that... I think that you, in, in a zone, you have to still have matchup principles. You know, when that ball goes up, you still got to find a body to get in front of and, uh, and then go aggressively at the ball. And everybody has to be on that. In a zone, you got to have rebounding from your guards for those long rebounds. Mosley has his pocket picked by Ellis. Over to Trice, who waits for the trailer, Costello. And Costello is fouled by Devin Berry. So Costello will shoot a pair. He struggled at the line so far this season, just five for 11. That's a big part of his game. When he was a high school player, Bay City, Michigan, he would habitually go to the free throw line, make a whole bunch, and he put up gaudy numbers as a high school player. But he struggled shooting free throws as a collegian. How high were those baskets in high school? Ten feet. We assume. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of them had the oval backboards, though. He's, he's confused. They still have oval backboards? Oh, you got to go to, like, the junior high school oh, okay. the church yeah. league level to I'm, see I'm those I'm showing now. my age here. Here's Trent Whiting, a junior, working the ball up high. Pull up, nice. Good offense, Tevin Hammond, his first field goal. First field goal by someone not named Marcel Mosley. Costello just taking advantage right on top of Trent Whiting. Well, he took his time, and he used the six foot nine frame that time to shoot it very comfortably across the middle. That's the type of offense that Michigan State would love to be able to get from Costello. Love. A little bit off the mark. One and done. Rebounded by Clark. Now quickly, the Spartans make it from end to end. They get up and down quickly, very fast. Resulted in a clean look for Clark. Offensive rebound. Costello blocked away. And he finally fumbles it. Gives it over to Mosley. In transition, bodies flying. Ellis. Hits the deck, he commits the foul, and we'll have free throws for Thaddeus Handley. Let's go back to the basket that Costello did convert. Watch this. Very comfortably, one dribble over the middle. Size advantage for sure. Able to score easily. Two free throws now for Thaddeus Handley. He's a local kid, Pine Bluff, Arkansas native, but his first year playing for the Golden Lions with the junior college route. Played a couple of seasons at that level. Greg, you 
said that Pine Bluff overmatched physically, but both sides are playing pretty hard early. They're playing hard, and I don't see any fear whatsoever from the Golden Lions, but, and I think they're starting to settle a little bit. You know, they're getting good shots. Defensively, again, they got to rebound it a little bit better on that end of the floor, but they look to have found a comfort level despite the two missed free throws. Trice back in the game. It's Trice, Ballantyne, Dawson, Schilling, and Bryn Forbes. So Tom Izzo putting his starting five on the floor, trying to get, uh, it's almost like a hockey mentality, coming in waves off the bench, playing his starters five at a time. Dawson power dribble raises up. And it's rebounded in traffic by Hammond. Much better job of rebounding now, as you can see. Everybody going down, guards going down to help out on that glass for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Chauncey Parker gets it out to Love. Little push off, no call. And the shot's missed. Here comes Trice. And Dawson was pushed on the catch. Last time we saw Michigan State on this floor playing Santa Clara, they were getting the ball up and down the floor in a blur every single time. Didn't matter if it was off a made field goal or a missed field goal. They were running the ball, and they did it without turning it over excessively. Very impressive were they that night, trying to get that thing going in this game. Travis Trice, that's a long two-pointer for the senior. And the lead is now 13 for the Spartans. First basket for Trice. And this is now the largest lead of the afternoon for Michigan State. Whiting gets a screen. Shot clock down to 10. Mosley may have to create. Hammond, contested three-pointer. And ahead of the pack, Spartans almost turned it over. Schilling had a step, but they couldn't get him the ball. Extra pass inside of Beauty. The assist, Dawson finds Schilling. And a timeout called by Arkansas Pine Bluff. 11 16 remaining here in our first half michigan on top of the golden lions by 15. 24 9 is the score michigan state 19th ranked team in the country got to bounce back from a loss on the road on wednesday against notre dame that loss was in overtime you wonder where will the spartans be ranked when the new poll comes out wonder if they'll be ranked when the new poll comes out I think they're wondering the same thing in Ann Arbor after the 17th ranked Wolverines lost this afternoon against NJIT. Saw it right here on BTN. But you saw that team against Marquette and you felt like they were a tougher team than oh. perhaps anticipated. You know what? People hear NJIT and they say, you know what? Isn't that the team that lost 51 straight? That was five long years ago. Those players that lost a whole bunch early in their career are now upperclassmen. And they're going to be a tough out. Nice pass again. Dawson to Schilling. This time Schilling can't throw it down. That's Good a nice defense. little combo there. Yeah. Good contest up at the rim by Arkansas Pine Bluff. The thing I like about Dawson that I'm seeing right now, even though he's coming off that 16-point game against Notre Dame, he's not looking to score. What he's doing is looking to pass because the pass is there. Very unselfish is he right now in the middle of that zone. Five turnovers now for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Spartans will draw something up. We'll see what it is when we come back to the Breslin Center. Well, a lot of wonderful matchups coming up right here on BTN. Creighton in Nebraska. That's actually tomorrow night, the battle for the state of Nebraska. And then, look at these. you got Oregon and Illinois. That game's going to be played at the uh, United Center. Cincinnati on the road against Nebraska. Notre Dame and Purdue in Indianapolis. A lot of fun things to look forward to. And I mentioned it before. Tomorrow night, the battle for the Cornhusker State. You've got Nebraska hosting Creighton in an in-state battle. Coverage starts 
7 Eastern Time, presented by April Air, right here on BTN and BTN to go. No Doug McDermott anymore for Creighton. Yep, he's but that uh, missed a beat. Yep. Listen, I'm off tomorrow. I'm going to watch that game. Great now in their second season in the new look Big East. So it's a Big East Big Ten battle. Schilling, good catch, had it knocked away from behind by Chauncey Parker, but a foul. Here again, Michigan State intent on getting it inside. And, and I like this number 34, mm -hmm. uh, Gavin Schilling. I, you know, he he's now starting to, to find himself. He had a big game against Santa Clara, rebounding, scoring, double-double. But he had a nice game against Notre Dame, a much stiffer opponent, which I think should grow his confidence. He's strong, he's agile, he's athletic. I think he can do big things for the Spartans. But you said he's got to learn how to play without fouling. He's got to learn how to stay out there. Greg, you talked to Tom Izzo about this kid, and he says, you know what? The biggest improvement is his hands. He's catching passes this year. Yeah grabbing rebounds this year that he wouldn't a year ago. How do you improve your hands? Well, you know what? <laughs> Play catch. Huh? Play catch. Play catch. It sounds simple, but that's how you do it. And you play catch on the move. Uh, you're not, you know, standing still. Fastballs, high balls, low balls. It's almost like in baseball. You get accustomed to catching the basketball. Ball's poked away. It'll stay with Arkansas Pine Bluff. 17 ticks. On the shot clock. Arkansas Pine Bluff, they have 11 points scored by just two players. That's the problem. They need to find balance. But all in all, their performance so far looks better than the deficit they're facing. Mosley may have been influenced by the crowd. They were giving him a bad time with the shot clock, and he shot it with four remaining on the shot clock. Yeah, yeah, but that you got to know that yourself because <laughs> right over the top of the backboard on both ends, you got the big shot clock. All it takes is a glance up. You don't trust the crowd, especially on the road. Check it for yourself. <laughs> on the inbounds play, Trice rips the triple. Travis Trice, he's now got five points. Talked about how Arkansas by Bluff has two different players that have scored through the first 10 minutes. Michigan State, they have seven yeah. different players in the scoring column. Hammond loses it. Spartan basketball. Here, check out the Spartans and check out Trice. Concentration. Nothing but the bottom. He's improved his game immensely, both from a leadership standpoint, passing the basketball much better, and that shot is something you can rely on now. Good catch by Valentine. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 18 seconds to make something happen. Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're hoping that ball had actually gone off of Valentine, but it's been off of Hammond. Marvin Clark Jr. back into the game, replacing Schilling. Trice goes to the bench as well. He's replaced by Costello. So it's Forbes, Valentine, Clark, Costello, and Dawson. The five on the floor for the Spartans. And Costello is fouled. That's the third different time we've seen Brandon Dawson in the high post. Not panicked but deliver a nice feed inside that resulted either in a layup or a foul. Yeah, they're converging on him quickly so that he doesn't necessarily have the shot. But give him credit, he keeps finding that little gap in the middle for the catch and then turning, making the right play. Here, we're going to take a look at it right now. Here again, Dawson, surrounded by defenders, making the right play down low, but he goes up to Costello and says, hey, man, dunk that thing. You can see it. He wants to start getting a few assists off mm -hmm. these passes. A couple years ago, Derek Nix, bigger guy, but he was really good as an interior passer as remember well. That. Remember that well. Hammond being bodied up by Dawson. That's impressive that Dawson can move his feet and stay in front of a much smaller, supposedly quicker guard. Shot clock down to nine. And again, the fans giving that false count. Dawson with the run out to Valentine. How silky smooth is he? Five points now for the junior from Sexton High School. And another rip away. Dawson!
This is what Tom Izzo was looking for. Coming off a loss on the road against Notre Dame. The Spartans needing a performance to get their confidence back up, and they've gotten it. It is a 16-2 run for Michigan State. And for the most part, it's been the upperclassmen, Valentine, Dawson, Costello, and Trice with the scoring. The balance you'd want, keeping everybody on the floor pretty much a threat, which makes you difficult to defend, keeps you unpredictable, and Michigan State's enjoying that right now. Goes one on one, pays the price as it knocked away by Valentine. It will be Arkansas Pine Bluff basketball when we come back. The Spartans rolling here at the Breslin Center. Basketball is a wonderful thing. Let's take a look at the AP poll. These are the top five teams. He was constant number two. That'll probably change. They lost at home earlier this week against Duke. And then you got Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Maryland, and Illinois. Greg, we should mention, though, that all of those teams losing in the past week. That's going to be some change. That poll is going to be volatile. Change is coming. But I love the fact that teams are challenging themselves. Yeah. Tom Izzo swears by that concept. And a shot clock violation. We talked to Tom Izzo before the game, and he said, you know what? I know exactly what I have. You know, there's a lot of coaches around this country that don't know what they have three weeks into the season. I know what my team is good at. I know where my warts are as well. That's important, and it's a proven method uh, by Tom Izzo and Michigan State. You know, as we said before, he's looking to be peaking in March and not right now in December. You take a few lumps, but you learn so much about yourselves. There's a foul on Thaddeus Handley, and that's going to be a three-shot opportunity for Travis Price. You know, with all the road activity that Michigan State has had, you know, you don't get a, you don't get a true sense of, uh, of the practice uh, schedule that you'd like to have at this time of the year. But with seven straight home games coming up, mm -hmm. a lot of that will change for Michigan State. They'll get a chance to work on a lot of stuff right here in the confines of the Breslin Center. The last time Michigan State played seven consecutive games at home, it was 1942. Woo. I wasn't around, were you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing at the Breslin Center. Trice, the three free throws. Here's number three. He makes two out of the three. That's the senior. Michigan State now playing with Valentine Trice, Alvin Ellis, Marvin Clark, and Matt Costello on the floor. Mosley. This looks like Trice knows where everyone is on the floor at all times. Valentine had it poked away. There's a turnover. Good, strong drive will result in free throws. Jovan Love. This was a nice stop in the subsequent push of the basketball by Arkansas Pine Bluff and a chance for Love, their second leading scorer, to get in the books. Let's stay tuned at halftime for the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall. Sean Merriman, Jim Miller, and Indy, and get you ready for tonight's Big Ten football championship game between Wisconsin and Ohio State. Greg, you're a Michigan State alum. Who do you got, Wisconsin or the Buckeyes? Wisconsin. 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 You don't trust the, well, uh, I, I don't know about the backup quarterbacks. to the backup yeah, quarterback yeah, in yeah, Ohio there's, State. There, there's a lot of ifs going on right there now. Cardale Jones will be the signal caller with Braxton Miller. And JT Barrett out. We'll 
see how it plays out. Five and a half minutes to play here in our first half. Mosley guarded by Forbes. Splits the double team nicely. And his pass too hot to handle. There's no gaps inside. Nothing. I mean, even when it looks like there might be a, a slim sliver of daylight for a penetrating golden lion, it closes quickly. And they ended up they end up forcing a shot or turning the ball over. Hasn't been very good on the interior for Arkansas Pine Bluff in this game. Poked away from behind by Clark. Five turnovers now for Michigan State. And Mosley is fouled in transition. Mosley's been the guy, but he's only one guy. He, he, he came out confident in this game shooting it, but then he's been quieted ever since. And uh, none of his teammates have been able to really step up to help out. Senior from Marion, Arkansas. That's up by Memphis. Trying to get double figures, and he does. That's now 10 points for Mosley. Watch this little strip from behind right there, and then off he goes. Two defenders, one on each side. He knows he's going to get to that free throw line. Look at his stroke. Look at his free throw. It's beautiful. Perfect form. Rotation plenty, as you pointed out. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. He's got great rotation. Travis Trice has virtually no rotation. Give me and the he's rotation. always been a good shooter. Yeah, give me the rotation, though. That rotation is going to give you a chance to have a ball fall when it doesn't go straight through. Ellis has it blocked away, but it stays with the Spartans. Good catch, Costello! Got to catch it first. The catch is so important. Costello with the good hands there. Colby Wallenman has checked in for the first time for the Spartans. He wears number 41 in white. Wallenman starting here on an academic scholarship, now an athletic scholarship guy. Ellis ahead of the pack. Score the goal, and he's fouled. Is he okay, though? Came down awkwardly after making that layup. Ellis started game one, had an ankle injury, didn't play for two weeks. Now it's the second game on the return. Watch well, Trice. Now he knows he's got a guy long, and he throws it. But look, you can see he kind of tweaked that thing before he even released mm -hmm. it. He tweaked it on the elevation. And if he's going to come out of the game, he's going to wait until he shoots the free throws. Oh, yeah. Before he comes out. And he'll have to stay in now. Looks like he's okay as he, he may... runs back down the floor. Yeah. Denzel Valentine at the table, waiting to replace Ellis with the next whistle. McIntyre is pushed. So now Ellis will leave the game. Valentine replaces him, and we'll see if there's any concern on the bench. As Ellis grabs a seat, doesn't look like anyone in the training staff is going anywhere near him. Here's Hammond, thought about it. Oh, brings Wallenman to his knees. Lead is 40 to 14. Michigan State on top of Arkansas Pine Bluff. These two met two years ago on this floor. Good catch, Wallenman. Faces to fall. Wallerman 6'7. Costello, 6'9. Skilling, 6'9. Just too much size in there for Arkansas Pine Bluff to handle, but that right there was some good offensive execution. It came off movement, a nice pass, and something close to the basket as far as the finish is concerned. Not enough of that, but that was nice. Forbes to Valentine. Waldeman had it poked away. I think that was a pass. Yeah. Trice. Who needs rotation? Trice now with nine first half points. Greg Kelser, nine different Spartans have scored. Conversely, only three. Three or four. You're reading it correctly. Hard to believe when you look at that statue. Schilling 
using that good body. He's got five points. Largest lead of the afternoon. 30-point bulge for Michigan State. In transition, Trice is nice. 12 points now for the senior. And he, lit, he had a little movement on that ball, but he's shooting it with a rhythm and a confidence right now. And you can see Michigan State's commitment to running the ball up the floor. And Tom Izzo giving them freedom to hoist from three-point land even early on the clock. I like it. I like it. up -tempo. rewarding that yeah. decision. Yep. Making five of nine three-pointers. I love up-tempo basketball. There's a nice drive there by Robinson. Valentine. Oh, my. Six first-half three-pointers for Michigan State. They've got a half a hundred. Well, you know what? They're, they're really, really causing... Arkansas Pine Bluff to have to guard a large area with their success on the three-point line. McIntyre takes his time. Had a good look, comes up empty, rips it back, and we've got a foul on the reach-in by Schilling. Timeout on the floor. It is fitting that Trice hits it from Thrice, the three-pointer for the senior. BTN has you covered for tonight's football championship between Ohio State and Wisconsin with pre- and post-game coverage live from Indy. It all starts 6.30 Eastern tonight on BTN, followed by the game on Fox at 8 Eastern time. So much on the line. Ohio State still holding out hope that they can get into that top four and get into the inaugural college football playoff. We know Oregon's going to be there. They won last night. Alabama, TCU, Florida State, they still could stub a toe, and Ohio State laying in wait. Well, Florida State better keep winning. They've got the ACC championship game, and they like to play with fire, but they haven't lost in two years. Yeah, that's why they should still be ranked number one, in my opinion. They I don't should. care how you win. The, the objective is to win. I am with you. Not a huge Florida State guy, but if you got the winning streak they do, you have to respect it. Now, don't forget, coming up in the half, it's the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall, Sean Merriman, and Jim Miller, all in Indy. Getting you ready for tonight's Big Ten Championship game between the Buckeyes and the Badgers. Mike Hall's everywhere. Man for all seasons. With Greg Kelser, I'm Eric Collins. Closing in on one minute mark of our first half. Trent Whiting. Arkansas Pine Bluff hands it off to Tevin Hammond. And Hammond is pushed. No shot fouled on the floor, but this will be a free throw opportunity. It'll be a one and one for Tevin Hammond. Seven team fouls for Michigan State. So for the most part, they've been played nice team defense without fouling excessively. This young man, Tevin Hammond, on the line right now, he had a huge game last season, but this year, last January. How about 30 points and seven steals against Alabama a &M? That's a lot of work. Arkansas Pine Bluff, wasn't that long ago? They went to the NCAA tournament. The 2010 NCAA tournament. They beat Winthrop in the opening round game and then lost against Duke. Nice backdoor lob. Valentine finds Dawson. Hey, here's a little irony for you. George Ivory, their head coach, played at Mississippi Valley for Lafayette Stribling. Back in 1986, they won the SWAC. And they played Duke Ooh. in the opening round. Duke was ranked number one in the country, and they lost by only six points. Mississippi Valley State, of course. Alma mater, Jerry Rice. Oh, yeah. All-time great athletes. And Willie Totten, the guy who was throwing to him. Oh, good memory. <laughs> Valentine was influenced by the defense crossing his face. And now the final shot of the first half taken by Miss, by Arkansas Pine Bluff. Maybe not. It's Valentine from half court. And he 
just can't get it to fall. Michigan State can't play much better through 20 minutes. The Spartans scored 54 points, nine different players getting to the scoring column. It is a 54 to 20 lead at the break. After the break, it's State Farm Halftime Report with Mike Hall, Sean Merriman, and Jim Miller from Indy. BTN is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. We are getting ready for our second half. The first half went pretty well for Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans with Greg Kelser. I'm Eric Collins. Look at the field goal percentages. 66% for Michigan State, just 24% for the Golden Lions. Well, the intensity has been there. They haven't played down to the level of the competition, which is something you always worry about when you're playing lesser talented teams. There's Travis Trice doing a nice job of leading the attack in that first half. Tom Izzo told us before the game he will be watching his team, their attitude, their body language, and I think so far he has to feel pretty good about it. Ten players played in the first half for Michigan State. Nine of them scored. Two in double figures. Matt Costello off the bench with 10. And Travis Trice with 12 points in 16 minutes. And right out of the shoot, we're going to have a foul call on the Spartans as Love hits the deck hard. Here that ball comes off and Love goes up. Not a lot of offensive rebounds available. Just three in the first half for Arkansas Pine Bluff. That was Which, the first foul of Gavin Schultz. That's good. That's a good sign. Stay on the floor. Stay available. Love gets inside. Dawson can't corral the rebound. Good pass inside. And Love this time cashes in. Give Finally. the assist to Giovanni Robinson. He's just the fourth player, though, for Arkansas Pine Bluff to score a field goal in this game. Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the SWAC. Rambling Southern, Texas Southern, Prairie View a and Alabama State. The schools make up the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Dawson, turn around. He liked that, that one back, short-armed it. He kind of rushed it, too. You know, sort of made his mind up that that was the shot he was going to take as opposed to locating the defense. Marcel Mosley. He led the Golden Lions in scoring the first half with 11. This is Hammond. Can't get past Forbes. Eight on the shot clock. Four, three, two, and Mosley up and under. Shot clock violation. Ten turnovers now for Arkansas Pine Bluff. This is the first of seven consecutive home games for Michigan State. They could use the work here in front of friendly faces. They played three weeks and eight games already, and only two have been at the President Center. That's unheard of. Builds your muscle, though. Pays off later. Michigan State actually has more losses on the year than home games. <laughs> three losses, only two home games coming into today. Forbes, always ready nice. to catch and shoot. Yeah. You know, if you're playing uh, Michigan State, you, you got to know that. And you, you got to know that you must be there on the catch because he's not catching the dribble. He's not catching the pass it. He's catching to shoot it. Forbes is now three for three from behind the arc. You add that to what he did against Notre Dame. He has made his last seven three-pointers. Over the last two games, he's made his last ten shots. And we're talking Brent Forbes. We're not talking layups. We're talking jumpers. Here's Forbes. You know what that means? Get him the ball. He's hot. <laughs> Mo 
Mosley bottled up by Forbes. Hammond inside. And a foul going for the ball. That'll be on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Well, Tom Izzo's team, they've been tested so far through their first eight games. They took on Duke, lost by 10. They lost against Kansas. That was close. And then they lost in overtime against Notre Dame back on Wednesday. They did beat Marquette. That was a worthwhile matchup out of the Big East. Marquette under a new head coach. Steve Wojciechowski trying to figure things out. You know, the Duke game, I, I remember, was it was pretty much an uphill battle for Michigan State throughout. They got it close. They got, you know, they had it close in the second half. They probably come away from all those games, though, feeling like they could have won them. Seven turnovers now for Michigan State, and it results in a foul on the other end. Jovan Love trying to throw it down with two hands. He'll go to the free throw line. The test for Michigan State, as you can see right there, the lob attempt. And Javon Love up high, nearly getting a three-point opportunity out of it. But the, the challenge for Michigan State right now is can they bring the intensity yet again? Can they restart it coming out of the halftime locker room? They had it throughout the 20-minute first half. But now, you know, with no threat of losing this game, can you bring it and play like it's 0-0 and start all over again? Marvin Clark into the game, replacing Dawson. So it's Clark, Nair, Trice, Costello, and Ballantyne. Five on the floor for Michigan State. Lural's there, the only Spartan to play in the first half and not score. You call him Rawls, you can call him Tough Thumb. Valentine. That's a tough contested jumper by Marcel Mosley. He's now got 13. All six feet of him. He's got a lot of heart, a lot of fire. Trice, three-pointer. He has been tremendous from behind the arc so far this afternoon. He has now made three three-pointers. You know what Arkansas Pine Bluff really needs? They need a sixth player out there. They need another, <laughs> they need another defender because Michigan State is spreading the floor and moving the ball so rapidly, they cannot... Con uh, they cannot reconvert on them or reconvene on them, I should say. 15 points for Travis Trice. 15, 29 remaining in this one. The 19th ranked team in the country. Michigan State on top of Arkansas Pine Bluff by a score of 60 to 26 with Greg Kelser on Eric Collins. Travis Trice has 15 of the 60 points for Michigan State. You know, you get a sense that Travis Trice could score pretty much whenever he wants to in this game, but I like the fact that he's maintaining, you know, his discipline, and he's being a leader, a point guard out there. He's keeping people involved, and uh, Tom Izzo has to like that. He's like a coach on the floor right now. What would you like best out of Trice this year? Him I, handling the ball, being the distributor, or letting Valentine do that, and Trice be the scorer? I want them to share it, because they both can. You know, it's nice to have versatile players out there. You know, Valentine can start the offense and be uh, counted on to do that without turning it over, and so can Trice. And they both can score. They're both starting to score consistently. So, you know, if they continue to develop as a twosome, versatility and all, Michigan State will benefit. And another thing I've noticed this afternoon is really a nice interior game passing from Brandon Dawson. It's a difficult skill learning how to pass in traffic. Good pass, Nair finds Costello. Chance for the three-point play. That's what Brandon Dawson told Costello in the first half. He said, hey, catch it and dunk it. And that time, the big six-foot-nine interior player got it done. Beautiful bounce pass right there. And there's the finish. Jalen Floyd, his third personal foul, trying to contain Costello. 13 points off the bench for the junior Costello. Lou Rawls there and put that right on the money. That was a spoon feeding 
and big guys like to be spoon fed. Easy to catch bounce pass right into the hands of Costello. Now he's going to get his jumper made by Love. Now, Jovan Love looked really good on that shot. He looked comfortable, took his time. Where has that been? Dawson had it poked away by Hammond. Numbers right now for the Golden Lions. And they don't capitalize. Steal by Costello. Bump it half court. Foul on Hammond. Third personal foul on Tevin Hammond. George Ivory. This is just a necessary evil for his program. Yeah. You play a whole bunch of non-conference road games getting ready for your conference slate. And your big, huge underdogs in all of them. Mayer finds Costello again. New career high for Matt Costello. You, you know, I, I tip my hat to the coaches and the players who have to withstand, you know, this type of scheduling each and every year. The schools, they need the bigger finance that you get from playing in games like this against bigger uh, established opponents. You don't come away with very many victories. What happened in Aaron Arbor today is a rarity. Uh, but, you know, these guys keep coming back. They keep playing hard. They don't seem to get down. And I think they feel that in some ways they'll be tougher when their conference schedule oh, sure. starts. Oh, sure. You just have to walk that fine line. You don't want the guys to kind of lose their spirit. Right. Because you're going and playing in front of 15,000 against ranked teams for six consecutive weeks, and it's not easy. All right, here's a good story. Jalen Floyd at the free throw line shooting two. He is a Michigander. He is from Detroit, went to Southfield High School, played with Carlton Brundage, who was a big-time prospect coming out of high school, originally signed with Michigan, and now he's playing at Detroit. But a lot of these kids on the floor right now for Michigan State, they grew up playing against and playing with Jalen Floyd, and now he gets a chance to play in front of family and friends close to his hometown. Oh, yeah. I'm very familiar with Southfield High School. I have a younger brother that graduated from there back in the 80s, and I actually run a basketball camp at Southfield High School. So very, very familiar. It is going to be Pine Bluff basketball, nine turnovers for the Spartans. Marvin Clark re-enters the game, replacing Brandon Dawson. Seems like whenever there's that switch, it's always Clark in for Dawson and vice versa. Can they play together at the same time, or are they strictly playing the same position? No, I, I think they can. I, I, again, I speak to versatility. And many of these young men out here can play multiple spots. I think Coach Israel, Israel is just looking at different combinations and, and trying to determine what he likes best from his guys out there in terms of, you know, grouping. And while I have you here, you talk about versatility. When you were a college player, if you said Magic Johnson, oh, my, look at that. That's old school. Trent Whiting, that'll be the shot of the day. A little reverse pivot, left-handed half hook. He's a right-handed player. Hey. Put a star next to that one. Born out of necessity. You want to give him an extra point for it? Uh, why not? <laughs> Ellis. Forbes. Rare miss from Forbes. All right, getting back to this. All right. Back in the late 70s, you played Magic Johnson, your teammate. And you don't ask him to be the point guard. Mostly for three. You say back to the basket today, Magic. As a back to the basket center, how many points do you score? Uh, 25. He could, really? have, he could have scored from no difference. Play, no difference. No difference. And 10 assists. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. More Magic Johnson talk with the great Greg Kelser. Don't go anywhere. It's up. Pine Bluff down big. But take a look at this shot by Trent Whiting. Break it down for me, Greg Kelser. Well, he does a nice little reverse pivot right there and then elevates with the left hand over the, the outstretched arm of the defender and caught nothing but the bottom. This was done with confidence, like he knew exactly what he wanted to do, Ooh. and it paid it off. I don't know if you saw the look of Matt Costello, who he made the shot over. Costello just had this look saying, wow, hey. I don't see that very often. Gotta that was a, terrific. Got to make a shot like that over your defensive hand. You tell him good shot. Keenan Wetzel is into the game. First time we've seen Wetzel on the floor. So it's Wetzel, Mayer, Ellis, and Costello. All five Spartans on the floor are reserves. So Tom Izzo getting some backups playing time. 12 minutes, 43 seconds left. 
Keenan Wetzel, a scholarship player this year, redshirt senior from Monroe, Michigan. Former walk-on who has paid his dues. Been to every single shoot-around and practice over the years, off-season conditioning. Tom Izzo recognizing it and saying, you know what, how about a scholarship? And Wetzel throws it away. Oh, else with the block. And a travel by McIntyre. Really nice defensive hustle here and timing on the block shot to deny that layup by Ellis Ellis the third Never gave up on that play and Was giving nothing even though Michigan State has the huge lead And Clark is fouled by McIntyre Here Look at Ellis. Uh, he gives himself a, a little bit of, a, of an edge by holding at his waist. We didn't see that in real time. Neither did the official. Arkansas Pine Bluff brings Larry Johnson back into the game. Marcel Mosley will grab a blow. Clark. Nair. And there travel. Lou Rawls, Tum Tum Nair, asking about his name. The Lou Rawls part. This is Lou Rawls, the former singer, straight through. He said, uh, well, he's a junior, so his father, his parents, really liked Lou Rawls. R&B singer back in the... 50s, 60s, and 70s just recently passed away. You'll never find. I love Lou, Lou Rawls. Classic. Classic he voice. Was terrific. Oh, yeah. We'll take a timeout. 65 33. The Spartans in control. See, Big Ten Challenge being held this past week. The Big Ten, they won it. Eight wins to six losses. Big Ten generally plays really well in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. How about Iowa taking on UNC? Michigan State, for their part, uh, they had to go on the road in the South Bend and take on a very game Notre Dame team. Denzel Valentine had a night. Game went into overtime. And uh, when it was all said and done, Michigan State, they lost five points. Overtime was dominated by Notre Dame. Michigan State got it within one, but that was a three-pointer at the last buzzer. Congratulations to Mike Bray and the guys from Michigan State. Just something to learn from. Again, you come away feeling like you let one slip, but you also learn that you can play on the road, cut a mistake or two, and you come away victorious perhaps next time. Another turnover. Schilling throws it away. Numbers for the Golden Lions. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What, we pulled to within 29? Tevin Hammond. I'm just saying, the second half. That's the thing. It has been a 16 to 11 bulge for Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's the thing that Tom Lizzo would talk to his guys about, about letting the concentration slip in the second half. Trice. Michigan State playing with their five starters on the floor. Tevin Hammond gets a screen from Devin Berry. Open look. He's going to hit that more often than not. Javon, Giovanni Robinson, 41%. Three-point shooter now has five points. That's his strength, his range. He shot that with tremendous confidence for sure. Extra pass, Dawson. The assist finds Schilling. I don't think Dawson has caught the ball in the middle of the zone one time and turned the shot. But he has caught it in the middle at least five or six times, turned around and passed it. I think the pass is way more impressive to me than the actual dunk itself. Oh, yeah. In transition, Valentine passed too high for Schilling. Last touched by the Golden Lions. 
Here again, you begin by giving Dawson credit for slipping into that opening, making himself available. And then when he catches it, the defense has to converge on him, and he's able to turn and make that easy pass, in that case, to Devin, uh, Gavin Schilling. Trent Whiting back into the game for Arkansas Pine Bluff. This is Whiting. Schilling takes his time and will shoot a pair. How about the look off from Trice? He looked at everybody except the guy he was passing it to, and I think the defense, as a result, was unable to respond in time without the foul. All right, Greg Kelser, these two free throws are going to be the 17th and 18th free throws taken by Michigan State. That's only four more than Arkansas Pine Bluff has shot. You take a look at the attempts, close to dead last in the country in attempts per game, 13 free throws per game. That's very unusual for a Tom Izzo coach team. Well, you know what? I think as they get stronger on the interior, guys are starting to get healthy now. Dawson's back. Yeah, they're going to pile up a bunch of free throw opportunities off their offensive rebounding, which I expect to, uh, to really improve. That figure will change, I think, in time. Michigan State just nine free throw attempts, making five of them against Notre Dame on Wednesday. Notre Dame, by the way, shot 25 free throws. Big difference in that game. Dawson sees everyone out of that high post. Another assist for Dawson. He finds Forbes. You know, he's really playing a smart game. And, you know, you might be tempted to look at the stat sheet afterwards and say, well, what happened to Dawson? Well, Dawson is playing with his teammates, making the right plays, and not necessarily thinking about his own scoring stats right now. They only have him for four assists on the game. Seems like he has more than that, but I guess they've that's all not, been... That's not, his, that's not his fault, because he's passed it down there, and there have been a few fouls, there have been some missed shots. He's played smartly. 8.15 remaining in this one. This time, Dawson takes it himself. Nine points for the senior from Gary, Indiana. Just his fifth shot attempt in this game. He's made four. I think we're finally seeing the fully evolved Brandon Dawson. It's not hurt, not inexperienced. He's become a player in full for Tom Izzo. Gets his own miss back. And we have a foul call on Hammond trying to get the ball back. Timeout on the floor. Brandon Dawson. Four highlight reel passes have resulted in dunks. Spartans up big. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. With Greg Kelser, I'm Eric Collins. The 19th ranked team of the country. Michigan State on top of Arkansas Pine Bluff. 72 to 39. Spartans try to get to 6-3 and three on the year. And then they're going to have a bit of a gap. They won't play again until December 14th against Oakland. Get some good work in. Forbes, Snare, Dawson, Valentine, Costello. Five on the floor for Michigan State. Forbes. Tapped up and in. Brandon Dawson. 11 points now for the former McDonald's All-American. Brandon Dawson's high school doesn't exist anymore. Went to Lou Wallace High School in Gary, and it's since been closed. Mark Paul. 
The Big Ten Digital Network is now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access to hundreds of non-televised games wherever you are. Get BTN Plus now, available on BTN Go. Oh, by the way, December 22nd, you can catch the Citadel taking on Michigan State on the Big Ten Digital Network. Now BTN Plus. out of Arkansas Pine Bluff, a man who wore golden shoes, L.C. Greenwood. Greenwood. The great L.C. Greenwood. Part of the Steel Curtain. Pittsburgh Steelers back in the 70s and 80s. Giovanni Robinson, his second three. Four Super Bowl rings. Love that team. Reach in foul. And we'll have a one-on-one -on -one situation. Devin Berry, the personal. One and one for Brandon Dawson. He is a poor free throw shooter. Had been five for 14 coming into today's game. Rate the performance now. The upperclassmen Dawson and Valentine we talked about earlier. Well, we, we talked about Dawson. I think he's played a smart game. He hasn't gone out hunting for points. He's made the right plays. And he's rebounding the basketball. His defense has been solid. And Valentine, likewise. You know, he's a, he's a guy that's been averaging 20 over his last four games. But he, too, has been unselfish. They've played together as a team. And everybody out there is a factor to, uh, or, or threat to score the basketball because of Michigan State's overall team unselfishness. That starts with their leaders out there, setting a tone. Put Trice in there, too. And Robinson really worked for that foul call. He had about four different uh, moves in the paint. And eventually, after enough head and shoulder fakes, he draws the foul. Look at this. Fake one way, up and under. You know, you would hope, though, not to have to work that hard to get a <laughs> shot, you know, to get a good shot. Intuitiveness. BTN goes where you want, when you want it with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. You can watch live hoops on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. To learn more, visit btntogo.com. <laughs> Only starters remaining in the game for Michigan State, Dawson, Valentine, and Forbes. Dawson thought he was whacked on the elbow. Pine Bluff, their next game up in Colorado Springs. They're going to take on Air Force Academy, part of their non conference odyssey. They're logging some miles, aren't they? My goodness. 14 straight road games, eight different states. Valentine goes to the bench. Will we see him again? Oh, my goodness. How many players have been comfortable enough with Tom Izzo where they could just have their hand around his shoulder? <laughs> dripping sweat under those uh, thousand dollar suits there may not be a better bigger player coach though than Tom is hey Tom's guys they 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 respect him number one they respond to his discipline and his motivational tactics and uh, they know that he truly cares about them think about some of the best leaders over the last 20 years and you just remember the relationship with Tom Mizzo yeah. the team please Draymond Green big time players who made big shots and played in big games and you can just imagine them. you can close your eyes and still remember the embraces yeah with Izzo and, and those players you know he's cut from the same cloth as his mentor Judd Heathcote and you know neither would ever be classified as easy to play for but I think the greatest tribute that any of the coaches, uh, especially Coach Izzo and Coach Heathcote, the greatest tribute you can give any of them is when a player will say, hey, I'd go and play for him again. I'd send my son to play for him. Uh, or that, absolutely. And, and that's what you hear when you talk about these coaches. Pass knocked away, numbers for the Golden Lions. Mosley, you know he's gonna fire that up. 
He's had a nice day. Marcel Mosley has not been bashful here on the big stage. He has got 19 points against the 19th ranked yeah. team in the country. Hey, his confidence started from the very beginning, and it has not waned one bit. And I want to say this thing about the coaches, too. I don't know any successful, high-level successful coaches that are easy to, to play for. You know, think about it. In the NFL, you think Bill Belichick is easy oh. to play for? But yet guys you respond. You come a couple minutes late for practice, you're yeah. benched for two weeks? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the great coaches are going to challenge you. They're going to push you farther than you would push yourself. And at times, you're not going to like them. But you can always respect and appreciate them and want to, uh, to work hard for them. Well, Matt Costello's waited a long time to earn his place in the sun. Costello is a guy who's been in the program, a rotational guy, but now getting extended minutes, and he was close to perfect today. He is our Duluth trading hardest working player. Five for six in the field, five for five at the free throw line. Well, you know what? He needed something good. You know, I always say that, you know, games like this also provide an opportunity for, you know, some of your guys who are still trying to work to a certain level maybe need a boost in the confidence department. These games are perfect for people like that, and Costello has benefited today. And Costello seems to be kind of on that same track as Gavin Schilling. Right now, how do you differentiate between the two, where they're at as a player? Well, I, I think I think, I think, I think Schilling can be uh, fantastic. I really do, because of his strength and because of his athleticism. I mean, he can do some things around that basket. He can play up above the rim. So I, I think that, you know, his upside is tremendous. But Costello has a role on this team, too, that's very important. And they have, they're going to need them both. Five subs in the game right now. Check that four subs and Brandon Dawson for Michigan State. Imagine that Dawson will probably be out at the next whistle. Turn around, up and in. Love two more for him. I will say this about Arkansas Pine Bluff. Significantly outmanned. They've been game for the first 36 minutes. Way better in the second half, too. Barry called for hitting Costello on the noggin. And we've got a timeout. 25-point lead for the Michigan State Spartans. We'll talk Brandon Dawson and his special game in a moment. Yeah. Um, I remember that, you know, after the game, we sat in the the trainers the trainers room and he called my mom. He told her what happened and you know he, he broke down in front of me and you know that's why I knew that you know like you know he, he really he truly cares about you know you know myself and you know just my future. Brandon Dawson, four years of experience with Tom Izzo and it's been a special four years. Well, you know what he what he spoke to just a moment ago is 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 the thing that's 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 the thing you don't see you don't hear about all the time you know how mm -hmm. Coach Izzo treats the youngsters as their as if they're his own children and as I said you may not always like but you'll you'll, you'll forever love playing for a guy like Tom Izzo. And this is what Tom Izzo said about Brandon Dawson. I think if he does the things I know he can do. I say we win that game against Kansas. That's a lot to put on a guy because I know he wants to be the player I think he can be. Dawson was limited under the weather against Kansas. Tom Izzo flat out saying, you know what? If he's healthy, we win that game against the Jayhawks. Dawson is still on the floor. The only starter remaining in the game for Michigan State. Kobe Wallenman is at the scores table. He will replace Dawson at the next whistle. Shot clock down to three. And stepping on the end line was Jalon Floyd. Here comes Wallenman replacing Brandon Dawson. Replacing Brandon Dawson. We talk about all the different ways that Tom Isho, Izzo has affected players, his former players in mass, come back to the Breslin Center. I can't remember a game over the last five years. Oh! That I've been here where you haven't seen Kelvin Torper, Drew Neitzel, Carlton Valentine. Marvin Clark makes the shot and he's fouled. Drop the basket. 
Again, high enough, but not a firm grip on the basketball. So it ends up being an opportunity for Michigan State to run down the floor, and they do, and they're going to get a three-point opportunity out of this on the strength of Clark Jr. And part of this seven-game homestand for Michigan State, they've got Oakland next December 14th. Eastern Michigan makes the short trip over. Texas Southern out of the SWAC, the Citadel, and then a couple of conference home games to begin the Big Ten season. Maryland, December 30th, and then Indiana. Look at Marvin Clark Jr., two more. Midcourt. Defense to offense in a hurry. They're in the double bonus now, so two free throws now for Nair. Talk about a uh, kind of a fancy existence. Nair was born in the Bahamas and then played his high school basketball in Bel Air. Bel Air, Kansas, that is. Ah, okay. Let's <laughs> clarify. Let's what if clarify. anyone calls him the French Prince of Bel Air, Kansas? I think it's just outside of Kansas. You know, when I played at Michigan State, we had a young man on our team that was from the Virgin Islands, Ron Charles, a starter on the national championship team, left the sunny climate of St. Croix Virgin Islands to come here and play in wintry cold East Lansing and it paid off for him <laughs> so he didn't mind the snow East Lansing is a nice spot a nice destination for some of those tropical island youngsters it works Big Ten basketball is the best in the country the only problem is the weather sometimes <laughs> if you don't like the cold you're oh. in the wrong spot <laughs> All right, what's going to be the big takeaway for Tom Izzo when he meets his team in the locker room after the game? What's he going to talk about as we see another turnover? Well, and, and probably his complaint, complaint will be that they, they had a drop-off a little bit in, in, uh, in their execution and in their concentration in the second half. Okay, that's going to be his complaint. But he's going to like the fact that he had balanced scoring. He's going to like the fact that he had interior strength. Dawson played a nice game, a smart game. Costello got some confidence. Schilling still is building his. Trice played really well, I thought. Leader out there on the floor. And Valentine, without turning the basketball over. Uh, I think there are certainly more positives that have come out of this, even for Coach Izzo, who sometimes can be uh, a little hard to please. <laughs> Trevor Bonoff will shoot two free throws. These are his first free throws as a junior. First shot attempt. He had played four games in nine minutes and never shot a free throw or attempted a shot from the field. He's from Saginaw, Michigan. He looks the part. Big Ten body, 6'7", 225. And now he's in the scoring column. 18 turnovers. Just came to that note. 18 turnovers for Michigan State. But very few when it really matters. In the first half, low number. It'll stay with the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. You know, seven days to practice and get better. The Michigan State next game against Oakland. And there's a freshman mistake, Marvin Clark, following a jump shooter. Oh, two guys over there closing but out of control and getting contact with the shooter Hammond. You know, in a situation like that, this, I wonder if when you're coaching over there, you're looking for things to be able to coach about. So there was one right there. 
you know, closing out under control because right now that doesn't hurt you at all. But in a game that's tight mm -hmm. against a better opponent, it can kill you. Did he miss all three? He did. Shot clock's been turned off. We may have seen our final shot of the afternoon. That's doing something for Clark to pass up an open shot. He likes to fire. Yeah, too much to resist. <laughs> too much to resist. Marvin Clark, the game's final three points for Michigan State. Mosley. And it's a final. Forever, people will remember in 85, 52 final tally. Michigan State, they move to 6-3 and three on the season. Next up, Oakland on December 14th. There's still things to work on for Tom Izzo's bunch, but a lot of positives as well. They shoot well over 50% as a club and win for the sixth time on the year. For my partner, Greg Kelser, and our entire Big Ten crew, I'm Eric Collins saying so long. Coming up next on the Big Ten Network is Big Ten Game Break.